What year did you move in? You I moved in 1972. Okay, well, so that's right after I was born. Yeah, talk about what the neighborhood was like in the 1970s. When I first moved over there, the neighborhood was fantastic. Every home was filled, every lot was uh, clean, no vacancies, and each house on the block was full with people and kids. Yeah, and there were so many families, that's what I remember. There were lots and lots of kids right. running up and down the up streets down all the, street. the time. So when they school, yeah, right. all in my yard and everything. <laughs> but once they closed that school down, all that deceased and people start moving out like flies. But I stuck around. I'm still there. Jackie Henderson isn't a relative of mine, but she is the president of the community association over near the Tuxedo Project. She remembers Tappan Middle School really well. She remembers when it closed a couple of decades ago and when they tore it down about 10 years ago. She's really excited about the prospect of the training center rising on that fallow site. Uh, I found out about this a while back, about the possibility of this and said to myself instantly, my gosh, if this happens, uh, everything in our neighborhood will change. Everything will be different. Michigan Regional Carpenters Council, we're providing these opportunities for, especially for this community, because we're about to be your neighbors. So you guys are gonna have lim a, a unlimited access to a facility that's going to train the next generation. How involved is the city in this? Oh, they've been extremely involved. I mean, uh, uh, yeah, it's, there's been, a, like I say, it's been two years, and there's a lot of issues. There's a lot of issues that you have to work out. Infrastructure issues, you know, uh, what, what's underneath the ground. The apprenticeship fund is going to be paying to build this. The union has been paying for this process to make it so that we'll find out if we can build something there, right? So all the civil engineering and all that has already been done. Mike Jackson worked with Detroit Mayor Mike Duggan to find a great location for this new training center. They settled our neighborhood for a couple of reasons. One is its proximity to the freeway. I-96, the Jeffries, runs right along the side of this property. We're also very close to the intersection of Livernois and Grand River. We still deal with a lot of blight around the Tuxedo Project. You know, we've been, you know, filing petitions, you know, to get them them. But other than that, the street is quiet and it's good. It's real good. Greg Motley lives across the street from the Tuxedo Project. On our block alone, there are 14 vacant homes, and most of them probably need to come down. We're hoping that's more of a priority now that the training center is on the way. Look, this is a fantastic project that you communicated and started, rolling with the wheels going, and I'm so proud of it, and I'm so happy and, and pleased and ecstatic that we're getting ready to have something done in our neighborhood. I have a feeling she hugged you right after that. Yeah, there's been a lot of hugs lately. Over there. You know, I think it was really neat because this is the first time that we've actually on the show gone back inside and taken a look at inside the house. Yeah. Since it's done and the fact that you're having meetings there and, and it's open to the community and this is really a, a part of a larger process that you've been working on and then for this project to come in, um, it's, 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 it's connecting, I think, a lot of the dots for it you. It is. It's, it's giving a boost to the things that we're already trying to do and, and sometimes being frustrated by, right? Like I said, there's 14 abandoned houses on that block, just on that one block. Uh, you, you talk about that combined with the challenges that the, our neighbors face uh, on a daily basis, the food insecurity, problems with water. Uh, it, it's a lot. And the Literary and Community Arts Center is a way to bring people together to try to build organization, to try to fight those things. Uh, but we've needed opportunity and we've needed investment uh, and this training center is both of those things right at the end of our block. We couldn't have dreamed up uh, a bigger or better kind of way to, to, to lift what we're trying to do. And so investment in the neighborhood, that was one of the things that, or you should actually most of what the state of the city address was that the mayor gave and talking about um, making sure that those investment projects are coming in in different areas of the city. Well, he talked about tearing down the obstacles to opportunity and certainly one obstacle to opportunity is getting people to training programs. And right. if you have a training program and it's downtown or it's out, out somewhere people can't get to because there's transportation issues in the city. This brings a training center right into a neighborhood where people, if they had to, can walk to it. And I, you know, I think this is a, a major commitment and a really good progress in trying to figure out, okay, we got all these programs, why aren't people participating and breaking down the obstacles to participation. Yeah.